So, uh, this session, positive image of organization. We're not selling the organization, we're selling the credibility of the organization. We're not making a sale of a product or service, but we're selling the organization. We're people be impressed, convinced by us. Okay? So, competency with confidence. You can trust my company, you can trust me. And good message with evidence. So it's not just some wild claim. Okay, it's real. So the structure is very simple. Break through all that competition for mind space. Break through with a strong opening. Fact, some piece of fact. What's the benefit of the fact? What's the evidence of the fact? Second fact, benefit, evidence. Third fact, benefit, then closing. Depending on the length of your talk, you might get through one of those. You might get through two. You might get through three. It might be an hour speech. But this is the, a good structure for getting credibility. And finally, last impression, closing. So I'll give you an example. I've actually I've written it up here on this board. This is like pretty simple in note form, right? So I get my opening. Daniel Carnegie training uses proven methodologies. That's the opening. I'm trying to give you something to be impressed about. The fact, we have been training adults, adult learners, for the last 100 years. That means 100 years of Kaizen, of improvement. Okay? That's the benefit. The evidence. We did a survey. Last five years, all courses, all instructors, everything. The average satisfaction rate that came back was 97.7%. There's the evidence, you see. Then the close. This is why we are so confident in what we teach. So opening, fact, benefit, evidence, close. See how that pattern works out? So it's in your manuals on page 14. You see it there. And maybe also on page 14, just write down five facts. So on page 14 at the bottom there, just make a little bit of space there. Just write down five facts about your organization. Five facts. Remember, you're selling your organization in this case, right? You're selling in the sense of trying to impress people. Right? Not the product or the service, you're actually trying to impress people about your company. So what are five facts about your company, just write those down. Again, opening is to break through, to get attention. Try to find a way into your audience's mind with what you want to talk about. There are many techniques. You could start with an exhibit if your product is an exhibit. Or something that's going to be very dramatic. Or get people involved by asking a question and they answer the question. Or try to find things that people agree on okay, in your opening. I think you'd all agree that Japan is in a very important place in the world with changes in demographics, globalization, you know, things that people generally agree on. Try and find something that gets people's attention. Okay? Now, option one, and you'll see in your uh, manual that there are many designs for you, free program designs for you to draw on of how you might start. Now, the first one there is an analogy. Okay? An analogy. So, there are many... Uh, many ways to think about analogy. Analogy compares two things which are not alike for the point of making it clear. Thinking about openings and closings. For a presentation. If I want to use an analogy, I could say something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, giving a presentation is very much like flying an airliner. When you're flying an airliner, the takeoff is very critical. In the same way that when we're giving a presentation, our first impression, breaking through the clutter of the audience's mind, is a very critical part of the speech. And the same thing when you're flying a plane, when it comes to landing, statistically, this is where most of the crashes occur. So you're really going to get the landing correct. And the same with the presentation. 
It's the last thing that people remember about us. So we can't leave the last impression to chance. We have to make sure it's a good, solid impression about us. So that's why the closing part needs to be dissolved. Now there's an analogy. I've compared flying an aircraft with giving a speech. They're not connected, but I've connected the two to make it very simple. Think about what is an analogy. The second one might be a startling statement. I read somewhere the other day that at some point in the future there are going to be no Japanese left based on the current population growth rate. <laughs> How could this be? You know? So again, it's a sort of crazy statement to go, yeah, well, I've read that too. Who can believe it? Or it could be some good news. Arbonomics is working. Why do I know that? My share prices have all gone up. My mutual funds, which were under water, have actually come onto the surface of last, or something like that, right? So it's something that's going to grab attention. Cut through the comp competition that's in your audience's mind for your message, and they will be full, trust me, full. Option two, you start with a question. You start with a question. Something that you're not expecting necessarily people to answer, it's a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question means it's a question that's posed, but the speaker will answer the question. Except that the audience, not quite sure, is that a question I've got to answer? Or is that a rhetorical question? So you've got their, you've got their attention straight away. For example, not as a rhetorical question, but just with questions. What month were you born in? June. See, when I ask her that question, no matter where her concentration has gone, she comes back into this room. Because your audience will leave you. They will take their mind to another place and leave you. Questions help you to bring them back. Because again, they don't know if they're going to answer the question. In that case, it's a real question you're going to answer. So the question is very powerful. Bring people back into the room, gets participation, and starts building agreement. You ask questions that people are going to agree to. Number three, the incident. It could be a personal experience, it could be something historical, it could be something happened to somebody else. But you go straight into a story. Now why this is very powerful is because every culture teaches storytelling to children. So we all grow up listening to stories from our parents. All of us, all around the world, very common thing. So our minds are tuned up to get into a story. So when you go into a personal experience that's very powerful, or a third party experience, or something historical, people absorb that message very quickly. Another option, a compliment. You compliment the listeners. You compliment the organization, or an individual. I'm delighted today to be able to stand before the board of directors of the Walt Disney Company, a company which I have admired my whole life since I was a child, <coughs> growing up, watching all of your wonderful programs. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying it, and I'm making sure my children continue to enjoy it. It's a great way to start a speech, right? If you're talking to Walt Disney, you're going to be very happy to hear that. Right? So you're getting to something that is genuine. It can't be fake. You know, if you hate Walt Disney, don't say I love Walt Disney. <laughs> you've got to be, it's got to be genuine. You can't fake this stuff. It's got to be real. Every single one of your audience has got a meter in their head. When they hear fake, it goes alarm. Ring, 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 ring. That doesn't sound right. And your credibility disappears just like that. So it's going to be genuine. Now, we have a thing with evidence, which is an acronym D E F E A T S. And the first part of this, to overcome doubt, okay, to get the balance to swing between. What I'm saying and what people are believing, we need evidence. So a demonstration of something could be good evidence. I did a demonstration earlier to show the difference between being congruent and incongruent when I deliver a message. I actually sh I demonstrated with no energy what that looked like compared to what it could look like. So it's very clear to you, oh, I see the difference. That works. Okay? That's proof that you need to be congruent. It might be an example of something. You can call on something from within your work that they know about, or something's public that they know about. Facts, always good. 97.7%, that's a fact. 
That's a fact. You can prove it. An exhibit, you might be showing something, it might be a new product, bio. This product is going to change your entire health system because your digestive system is one of the key energy burners in your whole body system. And this is going to make life a lot easier for you. See, so you're holding up the product, you know, in this case it's earlier, but uh, regardless of that. So, does this work? Analogy, I just gave the analogy example that works as well. Testimonials. We have on our website the most fantastic video. It's 34 seconds long. It comes from the world's most successful investor ever. Warren Buffett is unsurpassed as an individual investor. And he says on this video, Dale Carnegie training changed my life. Now that is a testimonial you cannot afford to pay for. He does it for free because he is a fan. See? That's a true story. It's a testimony. Yeah. And finally, statistics. You show something that's factual. So we've got an opening. When we get enough evidence here, then the whole thing works and we overcome doubt. Our evidence will overcome doubt. So now, if you look in your manuals, we have some closing sections there. We need to start thinking about going into the close. This is on page. I need to start on. Closes start on 24 there. Okay. So it's a big about closes. Last impression, strong impression. So when you're speaking, have your voice go up with energy at the end. Right, don't finish like that. Well, thank you very much for coming. Don't let it die. Last impression is important, so have your voice go up. Thank you very much for coming. It's been a pleasure to meet you today. Strong. Thank you very much for coming. It's been a pleasure to meet you. All right, so that's important. And logic at the end. Okay, something that's logical for them, but emotion inspires people, not logic. Persuade with logic, inspire with emotion. At the end there. The techniques, you might link it back to your opening. In this case, right, my opening was that we have proven methodologies. So when I get to the end, I might say, I mentioned proven methodologies. That's why. We are so confident in what we teach. So I link it back to the beginning. Or I just could make it something very personal. Tell a story about myself to finish it off. Uh, maybe something very dramatic. Ladies and gentlemen, you have one chance to take this training and make it work. Grab that chance. Good luck. Like that, you see? Very powerful. Could be a very strong visual. Final visual. Keep it brief. And again, build to a crescendo. Last words must go up. Don't let it go down or stay flat. So, uh, option number one you repeat the major benefit. 100 years of Kaizen means that you are getting the most polished methodology that exists in the world today about adult learning. Might be a quotation. Changed my life. That's what Warren Buffett said. Please remember that and take the opportunity to change your life. Title. Could be the key points. My key points were uh, 97.7 uh, satisfaction rate over the last five years. Uh, it could be the steps of a plan. Step one, step two, step three, what we're doing, you might bring those out. We had three steps we wanted to follow, they were one, two, three. I'm looking forward to working with you on making those a reality. Something like that would work for you. Action benefit, if we do this, this will be the outcome. That's a plus. My final recommendation is, you take the Dale Kennedy course because it worked for Warren Buffett, I guarantee it will work for you too. Whatever that might be. Right?
<laughs> and three down a challenge, feel the mobile notes. We can do it. We can be in that top three percent. All we need is to practice and rehearse and prepare. <laughs> On page twenty six <laughs> in your manual, page twenty six in your manual it says positive observations <laughs> by another presenters. Now you get a chance to see yourself on video, which is great. You see yourself there, that's great. But actually, while you're in this room, you've also got this great laboratory here of all your colleagues who are presenting. And when you're sitting there watching them, you will see things. You'll go, that works. Oh, that didn't work so well. Oh, I like that. Ah, I see the difference. Because I'm going to be coaching you now. And you'll see the difference when I give you the coaching and you, you start making those corrections mid-shot, something's going to happen. When you see those things, don't lose that opportunity. Make a note and say, I'm going to do that. And capture those points and say to yourself, I see that works, I'll put that in my repertoire. Or I see the difference, I'll make sure that I use that type of gesture. So 26 is a very key page. Get the stuff down. What you learn from others is huge. You only get to see yourself once, but you get to see a living laboratory of 11 other people getting coached and seeing what the difference.